You know, I could have sworn I tested you for hearing loss. Because I did say skip the hope to Terra 2. Terra 2. Not Tartarus. We could have saved this colony, you know. That was always the plan. I revive you, you do as I say. I tell you to go there, get me this, shoot that, and you do as I say. If you'd just listened to me, we could have rescued everyone on the Hope. We could have been the saviors of Halcyon. But you didn't listen. No one in this damn colony ever listens! Fighting back! I've released every prisoner in Tartarus. We'll take this prison over, or die in the attempt! We will not go quietly into the night. I'm wise to you and your silver tongue. You may have talked your way into the board's good graces, but I'm not about to fall for your rhetorical savvy. I don't care how many guns you've brought. If you try and stop me, by law, I'll bloody your damned nose. Is that right? Well, I didn't. I brought one, and I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. Adjutant Akande is my captive. If I'm to die here, then she's coming with me. I can't imagine we've got anything left to say. Of course you had a choice. You could have chosen any number of ways to tell the board to get spaced. You could have fought back. You could have spit in the board's eye. I refuse to believe that. You make it sound as if we're beaten from the start. The board's only strong because no one fights back. Let go. I've barely got anything left. A few tattered shreds of my dignity. A gun. My life's work has been an exercise in futility. The only honorable way to end it is to go down fighting. Surrender? Oh, I've had a bounty on my head for years. What do you expect will happen if I surrender? Torture. Execution. The board has already extracted the secret of reviving colonists from me. I'm no longer useful to them, so they'll make an example of me. No, I can't surrender. My life is the only thing I have left. I'm not going to just hand it over to the board's mercy. Enough! I can't take any more of this. I know what you're trying to do, torturing me with your words, reminding me of all my failures. Yes, I failed. There, I've said it. I'm a failure. I failed the colony. I failed myself. I failed you. Congratulations. You've broken me. Does that put a smile on your face? You monster. Then I suppose there's nothing left to say, except that I am sorry. I'm sorry for all that I've done, and for what I'm about to do. There's no other way this could possibly end. You and I both know that. I'm sorry about all this. I'm sorry about everything. It's just, I just wish we could have... Never mind. It doesn't matter.
Thank the law you're here. That madman was out of control. At least Wells did you the courtesy of saving you a bullet. I'll have one of my soldiers toss his body out on the surface. And what about you? You aren't hurt, I hope. Why shouldn't I be interested in the well-being of my finest agent? Not to mention my most valuable investment. You've put down the worst riot in our history. Rid the colony of a dangerous madman and saved my life. The board owes you a tremendous debt. We don't have a moment to lose. We're gonna have to work together to save Halcyon, because the situation is far worse than you imagined. I would like nothing more than to celebrate your victory, Captain. But we have a serious problem on our hands. We've lost all contact with Earth. It's been three years since we've received a message. We've had no contact, no signals, nothing. Earth has gone dark. Two years ago, the Earth Directorate's frigate disappeared en route to Earth. We don't know if they ever made it. We don't know if there's an Earth to go back to. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth was more than just some distant colonial authority, Dr. Fenhill. Earth was our lifeline. And now, we've been cut loose. You mean, we're all alone out here? Really alone? You sound frightened, Miss Holcomb. You should be. Fear sharpens the mind. We're alone, Captain. That's all I know for certain. Whatever happens to this colony, we're going to have to deal with it on our own. Returning to Earth is not an option. I'll answer however I can. I can't say for certain, but all my data suggests that Earth has experienced a massive calamity. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I'm not sure there's an Earth to go back to. I couldn't risk this news getting out. Before you, the two people in this colony who knew the truth were Chairman Rockwell and I. I had every intention of telling you the truth after you'd skipped the hope to Tartarus. Unfortunately, Phineas Wells chose that moment to start a riot. The Earth Directorate's frigate accounts for half of our military forces. Two years ago, that frigate disappeared while returning to Earth. We haven't heard a word back. Without the Directorate's frigate, our military forces are barely capable of maintaining control over this colony. Not a word. We received our last message three years ago. Our every attempt at reaching out to Earth has been met with absolute silence. Yes, we do have a long road ahead of us. But I have faith in you. The service you've done for this colony is nothing short of extraordinary. You're the reason I'm still standing here today. The board will survive because of you. And as the board goes, so goes Halcyon. It's time we carried out the program. I trust I can count on your support, Captain. I support your decision wholeheartedly. You've proven yourself the most capable leader in the colony. Now more than ever before, Halcyon needs strong leadership and a steady guiding hand. I look forward to serving as your adjutant. We're on our own now. Earth isn't coming to save us, so we're going to have to save ourselves. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The riots in Tartarus ended in a total victory for the board. Without any significant threats to challenge their power, the board asserted their control over the colony. The lifetime employment program began immediately and the people of Halcyon did exactly what they were expected to do. They obeyed. Sophia Akande converted the labyrinth from a prison to a processing center. She jettisoned the original colonists out of the hope, 
and transform the ship into a massive storage facility. One by one, the workers of Halcyon surrendered themselves to the program. They arrived with their families and their friends, their colleagues and their neighbors. And then, one by one, they marched into their stasis chambers. As the workers of Halcyon slept in their hibernation chambers, their settlements became ghost towns, left behind by the board to be reclaimed by nature. Only Byzantium remained, a shining beacon of civilization in an otherwise abandoned colony. The people of Byzantium spent the rest of their days gorging themselves on their stockpile of resources. As for the workers of Halcyon, they never felt the effects of the collapse. They never felt anything at all. As the board began to enact the lifetime employment program, Sanjar and Zora brought another option to the townships of Terra II. Many workers joined MSI, bolstering Sanjar's ranks and giving Zora more forces to work with. Though none of Sanjar's policies spread to Byzantium, many smaller townships that might otherwise have been shuttered thrived under his and Zora's combined leadership. Over the years, the ruins of Edgewater caused irreversible environmental damage to the landscape of Emerald Vale, owing largely to the presence of toxic compounds in the town's building materials. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna, leading to an explosion in the Sprat population. While the groundbreaker remained mechanically stable, the changing times forced Junlei Tennyson to make some difficult calls on behalf of her community. The work of maintaining independence was an uphill climb, and she found herself caving to bad faith compromises with the board. Time will tell if the groundbreaker can endure. As smaller settlements were swallowed up and their workers drafted into the lifetime employment program, Byzantium continued to thrive. While its citizens lived in decadence and extravagance, a small cadre of scientists worked to solve the nutrition crisis that threatened Halcyon. No one else much noticed the townships that disappeared from the map, or the luxuries that slowly lost their luster year by year. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people, sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. As the board reasserted control over Halcyon, Felix came to realize that his life as an upstart rebel had come to an end. The board's victory crushed any hope for a grand revolution across Halcyon. And so Felix, once again, found himself without a purpose in life. And so, disillusioned with his former boss and with nowhere left to go, Felix left his crew without saying goodbye. He was never heard from again. As a reward for his part in her courageous rescue, the adjutant invited the vicar known as Max to become one of the leaders of the Order of Scientific Inquiry. But Max had no interest in serving any organization, let alone the OSI, which he knew would never tolerate his heretical theories. Instead, he attempted to minister to the people of Byzantium. They rejected his ideas, being far too satisfied with their own material comforts. Disillusioned, Max gave up and left the city. He was never heard from again. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, Junlei bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. As the board began to roll out their lifetime employment program, Parvati was increasingly plagued by dreams of freezing to death and rarely left their shared quarters. Stymied by dwindling resources, Junlei struggled to keep the groundbreaker afloat. Their relationship couldn't survive the strain. Parvati moved into crew quarters and found work servicing water pumps in hydroponics. 
Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Adjutant Sophia Akande was instrumental in executing the Lifetime Employment Program. Following the death of Chairman Rockwell, Sophia Akande served as the loyal adjutant to her former freelancer, now the most powerful person in Halcyon. With Halcyon's workers suspended in a state of hibernation, starvation and chaos are problems of the past. The Lifetime Employment Program succeeded in its goals, but that success came at a price. The Halcyon of today is nothing at all like the colony of yesteryear. Power remains concentrated in Byzantium, but all the colony's resources serve the lifestyle of the elite, thereby transforming Halcyon into one of the smallest and most exclusive colonies in the system. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. With Sophia Akande as your adjutant, you returned in triumph to Byzantium. All of Halcyon was yours. In time, you demonstrated a talent for leadership that far surpassed your predecessor, Chairman Rockwell. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years to follow and helped ensure the colony's survival. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.